Today, we're doing new school versus old school. We've got one of the most well-known people in barbecue, Franklin, going up against the newcomer. Texas Monthly, Top 50, Goldie's Barbecue. I bought the rubs, we did some brisket. Let's see how they taste. What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name is Jake, you're watching Roman Cook. Today, on the channel, it was time to do some offset content once again, and we're doing a head-to-head -head battle. I bought two different seasonings, one from Franklin's, one from Goldie's. We carved up some briskets, we cooked them all night, and we're about to try them. Before we can do that, let me bring you up to speed on how we got here. So yesterday, I picked up two prime briskets from Costco. Nothing special, they're both about 16 pounds. So I opened up my first brisket, I took off that big piece of deco fat, and then on the top meat side, I started working away at that silver skin taking off some of the larger chunks of white fat as well. Really took my time here. Now the one thing that I've been working on is really trying to get my, my brisket prep down. So the briskets are looking really good when we get to that final product. So I really took my time and I removed as little meat as possible and I worked through all of that silver skin. I then took off the one side so you can see just how thick that fat cap is and I started to work on the fat cap. Really gotta take your time here. Our goal is to leave about a quarter inch of fat there across the whole top side. From there, I kept working away at that. Once I was happy with where our fat cap was, then I took my knife, I cut off the other side and we rounded off the whole brisket. Once we had that rounded off, then I just looked for some jagged edges, right? We don't want any pointed or sharp edges on our briskets. They will just burn. I learned this the hard way. So I took my time to try and make them as aerodynamic as possible. We went around the whole outside on both sides to make sure that we had a nice aerodynamic brisket when we're done. And I gotta say at the end of the first one, I was pretty happy. Turned out pretty good for a rookie. Then what we did is we opened up the second one. I went through that process and we got them both side by side. One of them had a couple of gashes in it. What are you gonna do about that? It is what it is. So then what we did is we pulled out our Franklin rub. Now Franklin has two different options here. We've got our brisket spice, which is just salt and pepper. And then we have our barbecue spice, which I decided to use both of them, I think, in Texas or in there. They, he probably uses both of them, and I'm sure there's some other things that aren't in either of these. However, I wanted to use both of these to give it some nice flavor because the barbecue spice has got all the additives besides the salt and pepper. So I think everyone knows by now, in Texas, everyone's using more than just salt and pepper. So I put a good heavy coat of the salt and pepper on there. We started with the bottom meat side, put that on there make sure you get the sides. And then I put a, a liberal coating of the barbecue seasoning on there and got the sides with that as well. And then what we did is we flipped it over. We made sure we got our presentation side, our fat cap. Again, we started with some of the barbecue spice, salt, pepper, good heavy coating over there. And then we added in our barbecue spice, filled that all out. The first one's looking great. Then what we did is we got out our Goldie's rub and this one, there's only one part to it. So I put a good heavy coating. We started again with the meat side up, gave that a liberal coating over the entire thing, made sure you get the sides. And then we flipped it over and we got the fat cap, put another heavy coating on there. And at the end of this, we had two fine looking briskets. From that point, I went out and we started to fire. Went out, got our fire started, and since it takes about an hour to get our pit up to temperature, I just let the brisket sit in the fridge for an hour to soak in that seasoning. So this video really isn't about the cook, but I wanna go over what we did here. Got the pit up to about 225, put both briskets on, I put the point towards the fire, and we let them roll. Around six hours in, they were looking pretty good. I started to spray them. And what I did is I put a fire log there to block some of the airflow because I was getting some crispy parts, obviously not as aerodynamic as it should have been. So what I did is I put a little bit of foil on there and I just let it roll. Then around 180, I wrapped them paper. I did not use any tallow whatsoever. I just wrapped them, made sure it was tight. And then around 197, 
I pulled them from the pit and I took them inside. Now it was late, I don't have a lot of footage for this. I don't have any footage for this because it was late actually, I'm sorry. However, not much to see. Threw them in the oven and what I did is I set my oven at warm and for me that's about 155. Let them go there, that was 14 hours ago. They've just been sitting there doing nothing. I just pulled them out to let them cool down. Let's have a look at how we did. So, here are the stars of the show. I apologize, it is windy outside and freezing, but we're not gonna let that prevent us from trying some brisket. On this side, we've got the Franklins. On this side, we've got the Goldies. I'll give you an idea. They were in two different ovens and they're slightly different. So on this one, this one's a little hotter, 163, 162. So it's a little hotter than I would like. This one's 158. So not too bad. I mean, they should be a little cooler to try, but again, this is not about cooking brisket. This is about the flavor of them. I've never tried them side by side. So I'm really curious to see how they taste. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna give them a little flip. Make sure we can get some of that tallow on the bottom there. Man, I'll tell you what, <laughs> the worst thing about doing something like this is I've been smelling brisket all day. Huh, I never had that happen before. Stuck a little bit. Must mean I rendered my fat well. Oh, don't. One little, <laughs> one little part there. All right, so we're gonna get these guys open. I'm gonna put them both on the board. So let me uh, out like this. Give you a little bit of tallow here. Again, I didn't put any tallow in with these guys at all. It's actually not too much. This one leaked and I got a bunch of liquid all over the bottom of the tray, but it is kind of cold outside so you can see it already solidified. <laughs> now the one thing that happened is this one was in a different oven that I don't use a lot. And I one time I, got, I cooked at 140 overnight. I think my meat was 139 and it, I was a little worried it was bad. So I, I, I still ate it, it was still good, but I dialed this up and I didn't check the temperature. So this was actually at 185 this morning. So I know this one's gonna be slightly, probably overcooked a little bit. Time to cut them up. So we'll try with the Franklins first. You know, looking at these side by side, you really can't see too much of a difference. They're both dark and got a nice bark on them. And actually what I did here, I made a little cut so I know exactly which way the grain goes. Same on this guy. Cut them roughly in half. There you go. We don't squeeze our meat on this channel, but you can see that that is nice and moist. That's looking good. Man. Savor that goodness there. There's the Goldie's point and the flat. They both look good. You can see that brown along the top. I don't know who rendered that fat, but he did a pretty good job. Um, both of them look pretty good. Let's protect our briskets here for a sec with a little bit, bit of fat. All right, let's give these guys a try. 40 degrees outside. Obviously brisket does not stay very warm, but they're both looking absolutely delicious. I'm gonna try the flat first and I'm gonna go right to the middle, not to waste any time. You can tell this guy, this is the one that got up, <laughs> rested at 180 for a little while. So it's definitely gonna be a little overdone. Yeah, Oof, it just falls apart. Man, it's got a good flavor. Nothing to complain about there. Really, really like that. Again, video is not really about cooking brisket, but when you rest it for 10 hours at 185, it does get a little overdone. Let's try this guy. And again, I'm gonna go right in the center here. I don't wanna to trim too much out cause it's so cold outside. This one's much better. 
I used this oven all the time, so I knew warm was 155. Mm. Very different tastes. Both very, very good. Let me take some burn ends just so I can have a little bit of the point here as well. That's all I'm going to cut. I don't want to waste the rest of it. Try this. Honestly, it's neck and neck. They are different, but they are both very, very good. I have a hard time. It is super, super close. Now, obviously, each of these guys uses something different in the restaurant. Maybe this is a base, but I'm sure they add something slightly different. These are not the exact recipes. I think they're pretty good. From a flavor perspective, they're very different. Both very good. I think you should give them both a try. I think Derby's wins as far as I'm concerned. I, I like it just a little bit better, but I like them both. Can't really, we're talking 10% difference. It's, it's a really small difference. Almost at a loss for words. <laughs> it is quite good. <laughs> I'm freezing. Before we can go any further in this video, we need to look at the contest winner from last week. It's contest time once again. Let's get this set up here. All right, so the hashtags were meatball sandwich and smoked flavor. And let's see here. Thirty one unique comments. Ryan Whiteford, that looks amazing. Definitely going to whip these up soon for my family with the hashtags. Ryan, I'm going to comment on your comment. You can email one rum and cook at gmail.com. We'll confirm it to you and you just won yourself a $25 gift card to at bbq.com. For this week's contest, quick reminder, all you gotta do is you gotta be subscribed to the channel, you gotta give the video a thumbs up. If you're a Patreon member, even at the $5 level, I will double it. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna comment down below, hashtag Franklin's, hashtag Goldie's with some comment and you will win or you'll be entered to win $25 gift card at appybq.com. And if you're a Patreon member, remember, I will double that and I'll make it 50 bucks. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you soon.